Okay, welcome everyone. So we are going to do a workshop on how to code for the Google Hashboard competition. So uh, I'll straightly go to the presentation now, I think. Danushka. Yeah. So a brief introduction about myself. So I am an engineering graduate from the University of Peradeniya. Uh, currently, I'm working as a research assistant at the Uni of, University of Peradeniya. And uh, uh, for so some of the past achievements that I have done. So I was a member of the team Bytecode uh, during 2015 and 2019, and we won several uh, programming competitions. Uh, especially uh, IEEE Extreme and uh, ASUS Coders competitions. And uh, I'm going to give uh, a brief introduction about uh, how, what is this Google Hash Code competition is. So basically this is a team-based uh, programming competitions organized by Google yearly. And uh, they model a problem from a real world uh, problem and they, give this problem to the hash code uh, this competition and they these teams try to uh, come up with a solution to this problem so usually teams are about two to four sizes and uh, from all around the world so so why do you want to like uh, participate in this competition so basically this is a high-end competition organized by google and if you participate in this competition and if you come to at least uh, go to the final world finals uh, it will look very good on your cv that means your profile so because uh, this uh, problem needs uh, really thorough analytical skills and problem solving skills and communication skills and this look very good on your profile and uh, of course uh, if you are going to a job, uh, these uh, interviews, they ask about these algorithm knowledges and uh, how this is tested on real world applications. And you can give this as a proof to show that you know how to handle these kind of hard problems. So uh, are there any restrictions to participate to this uh, competition? So basically you need to be at least 16 years old and uh, uh, this problem doesn't have a specific solution so there can be like many approaches to solving this problem and you can use any uh, programming language to uh, code the solution and uh, you have to solve this problem less than uh, four hours so the qualification round has four hours to solve the problem and uh, your compressed code source code size should be less than 60 megabytes and you can have you can't get help from your friends or the family so what sort of problem do you get in this competition so like i said it is a real life practical problem uh, usually from a google project or an application like uh, there are servers or like a video streaming problem something like that uh, and usually it is an optimization problem so you need to know about uh, how to handle with, uh, big data structures and uh, how to solve uh, optimization problems. So, uh, like I said, uh, you need to know about the data structures like queues, uh, lists, buffers, etc. And uh, you can solve this problem using any program lang language, like I mentioned. So, there's a pra practice round uh, that is going on right now so you can go actually go to google code 2022 and uh, uh, check this practice round but uh, the qualification round starts on uh, february 24th uh, at 11 pm sri lankan time and uh, the if you you have four hours to complete the complete the task and submit and uh, you in the world final starts on uh, april 30th like uh, like the top 30 to 50 uh, highest scoring teams will be selected to this and you have to actually go to the uh, this google uh, google i think it's in 
I don't know, it's in California. I don't know, I don't know exactly where it is. You have to go there and participate in person. And uh, uh, registration, registration is now open until February 23rd. And uh, there are lots of questions. If you, might, you might have a lot of questions and uh, most of the uh, frequently asked questions will be answered in this uh, Google hash code FAQ section. So you have you can go there and check it out. Okay, now let's go to the task at hand. So the main objective of this workshop is to like uh, show you the path, like how to solve a problem given in Google hash code. Uh, I will uh, give some, I will show some code, but mainly I will be focusing on how to approach a problem and how to solve it. So I have given uh, two columns here, like on the left side, there's a one approach and, uh, and on the right side, there's a second approach. You can choose any one of them, but I will go through them uh, one by one. So in the left side, you can see that uh, you have to uh, read the problem that is mandatory in each in both approaches and you can uh, take you have you have given like a sample uh, data in your problem so you can take this data like a very small data and uh, uh, you can optimize this like find a solution manually like mm, you can uh, reduce the problem to uh, like a very small problem like uh, like a day to day problem or and you can uh, solve it manually using hand or like a pen and paper and um, you can write uh, you can write a serial code for that uh, approach that you took and you can convert that serial code to a real code the other approach is you uh, you reduce the data set size like if you have like a 100 by 100 matrix you solve it for like a 4 by 4 matrix and then uh, you write a code for that. And then you just change the size size of the variables. Like if it is four by four, you change it to 100 by 100. Then you uh, get the data from the question. And then uh, you run it using your code and upload the results. Those are like the two main approaches to solve these problems. And you have many uh, like, in both cases, you have like many algorithms that you can use to solve this problem. So if you're a beginner to this hash code competition, you can pick any programming language and learn the basics, like how to get an input from a file, how to output a file, and how to use these uh, uh, structures, like if, if, if statements for, for loops, and how to create functions, how to create classes, in any uh, any program language that you like uh, because you have like four hours to complete this task therefore the time is critical but it's not critical like whether you have to use python or c plus plus you can use any language and you can uh, uh, solve these problems and of course you can uh, uh, look at the past problems i think you have problems until 2015 or 14 so there are like six or seven uh, 14 questions that you can have like from the qualification round and the world finals and you can practice them and uh, you have to learn uh, basic data structures like uh, how to use a heap uh, binary trees uh, graphs etc and uh, some of the basic algorithms like how to traverse a graph uh, how to find uh, i don't know like a min, min heap how to create a min heap something like that so you have to know about these uh, small basic uh, data structures and algorithms related to them. So if you are like comfortable with these algorithms and uh, data structures and how to get an input and get an output, you can practice uh, and upload the results to the practice round and you, you might get a re result and there are like different platforms you can use and you can upload your results and there are like uh, different leaderboards, then you can see where you're at and you might try to get a higher point. And you can learn advanced algorithms like uh, minimum graph cut algorithms and uh, how to find uh, different um, subgraphs uh, by pattern matching like that. 
and uh, you must uh, develop uh, your own library like uh, you can like collect different optimization algorithms these data structure algorithms and you can have like a small uh, library for yourself then if you need to know if you need to apply some kind of algorithm you just go through your library and you pick that one out and uh, uh, you use it in your problem so you don't have to like type it from beginning like from the scratch you can use your own code and uh, solve these problems and uh, some of these uh, some people like they share their solutions and you can check them out and uh, see how they approach these problems and how they got the best uh, solution and of course i will explain one solution that we got um, that uh, a person got and i will explain it uh, in this uh, workshop and uh, and of course, you have to practice it as, as a team because this is a, a two to four people uh, are in a team and you have to use their uh, time and uh, their skills very effectively. So you have to like, uh, you can, maybe you can have a Zoom call or you can get together and uh, uh, you have to like uh, give different tasks to each person so that you don't waste time so so what are the things that you should not do so you should not hassle so when you get the problem it might be like, it, it might be a very long problem like uh, one or two pages long so you have to read very thoroughly and uh, understand what is happening and uh, you might you might want to use like 10 to 15 minutes to understand the problem therefore you have you don't panic and you just read, go through the problem and discuss with your peers, your teammates and uh, come to a solution. And uh, don't overcommit to details because uh, there are, might be like, uh, there's an introduction section in the problem. I will, I will show you a, pro a sample problem. And uh, there's an introduction section and it gives an introduction about the, pro like the, the problem. Like if you are using a data center, and they give like a, what is a data center and something some kind of a introduction so you don't need to actually read it so if you don't understand something in the introduction you just skip it because there's nothing important in the introduction section so and the other thing is don't reinvent the field if you have a, a defined algorithm to do something don't think if you know what is happening using the algorithm don't like uh, reinvent it you just search in the internet and get the algorithm and you just use it so and the other thing is uh, mm, don't code like uh, don't make your own code difficult for yourself you should use a, uh, a correct program flow and define classes properly and define function properly so that you know what you are doing and uh, you can like share it with your friends and uh, they also know what you are doing so so what it takes to score high points so do you need to be expert in programming no because there are people who participated in google hash code using excel they have got higher marks than those who like code using programming languages you can you don't need to use like program language but uh, you don't need to be an expert you can use a program language and solve this problem but you don't need to be a very expert about in on programming and you don't need to know about a lot of algorithms and data structures you don't need to know very advanced mathematical knowledge you can use like a basic mathematical concepts and solve this problem and basically what you need is problem solving skills and practice so you need to uh, go through previous problems and uh, uh, practice them and you can discuss with your team and you can basically look at the past problems and their solutions and see how they have approached this problem and see you might also try like for like maybe two three 
hours try to find a solution for those problems and uh, you can see the final best result this solution and uh, try to learn something from that solution okay so what is the problem structure so first like i said there's an introduction basically you can skip it like it's an introduction about the problem and you you have the problem description in the problem description you have the task the task is what you have to do like uh, the problem definition like mm, what you need to submit at the end and you there is like uh, the after that there are like separate sections like describing the components in the problem like if that's if it is a, like a problem related to pizza or something like that uh, they define what is a pizza and they define what is an order like that they are in this this part in this part you will have those things and then you will get the input data set and the file format used in the data set and how to submit uh, the solutions and the file format of the solution file and then you will have an example like a very small example and they will uh, uh, show like the file formats and the submission file formats and etc okay so now what we will do is we will solve a problem from 2015 so this was given in the qualification round in 2015 so this is about optimizing a data center and uh, we have given an introduction here so you can read it or maybe later this is in, in you can search the this problem and find this introduction section but i'm not going to go through it it's basically showing what is a good idea, what is a data center and how it is used and what is the impo importance of optimizing this data center so let's go to the task in the task mm, uh, what they are saying is uh, there are different rows in the data center like this like in the blue rectangles there are different rows in the data center and uh, you have different kind of different set of servers like this yellow uh, yellow rectangles and green rectangles those are the servers and there are places that you can't put a server like this x cross here you can't put a server in that row so basically you have to what you have to do is you have to place these servers in these rows like this and uh, you can't uh, keep an empty slot in the row okay so uh, and uh, each server has a capacity so uh, this server might have a capacity like i don't know 10 and this might have 8 and this might have 7 this might have 3 1 and 2 so what they're saying is uh, there is a chance that a, a row might go off like it might die the complete row will go offline in that case uh, the other servers of course they can function so they have divided these uh, servers into different pools so in this example there is a yellow pool and a green pool now if if you like uh, if the first first row goes out you have the second row and the third row and the capacity of the uh, green one and the yellow one you can find out like you can cut this out and the capacity of the green one is five and the capacity of the seven uh, yellow one is seven like that but uh, the thing is you don't know what row will go out so you have to check this for each row you have to cut this and see what is the capacity like that and you have to find a guaranteed capacity 
So I will explain this with a uh, figure in the next slide. So let's go to the next slide and see what is happening. So these are the slots that I have mentioned. The, the data center has these kind of rows like this, and each row has these slots, OK? And uh, some of the slots cannot be occupied by a server. And the servers are like this. They have different sizes, and they have different capacities. OK? So I'll go through the input later. So what I'm going to do is I will explain what is happening by the what you have to do. So I will explain those uh, input, uh, what is the input and what is the output, those things later. So if you have a data center like this, OK, you have the green one and you have the yellow one, uh, you can, uh, let's assume that the first row goes out like this. And we are considering the green pool. OK, so if the first row goes out, its capacity is 6 plus 2, 8. And if the second row go, goes out, it's 3 plus 2, 5. And the third row goes out, it's 9. You can do the same thing for the yellow pool. Then you can find out the capacities of uh, the servers in the yellow pool. So what they are saying is you have to find the minimum. You have to find the minimum of these uh, capacities. In the green pool, it is 5. In the yellow pool, it is 4. So what you need to do is you have to maintain a minimum. You have to, like, uh, if, you are, if you have a data center, what you need to do is you have to have a set of servers. Even though a row goes out, it has, a, like, a high capacity. So what you need to do is you need to maximize these lowest numbers. OK, so we need to, what you need to find is what you need to find is the minimum of these five and four. That means the, it is four. So so basically we can what we can say is even if a row goes out in this server, you are guaranteed to have a capacity of four. I hope everyone understand the problem. So what you need to do is maximize this number. So if you can maximize the, you can like place these servers like uh, in different locations in the data center and you can maximize this number. Okay, that is the problem. So how to do this? That is the problem. So I'll show how they are giving the input and output now. So what they're giving is uh, they are saying that there are R number of rows and uh, each row has a uh, S number of slots. That means like a 2D matrix like this. Uh, there are R rows and there are S slots. Now, there are several slots that are unavailable. Right, so they are giving them as well. So there are like u number of uh, unavailable slots. So they are giving this uh, location using a, a basic uh, matrix notation, like uh, the row number and the column number. And you have uh, p number. You have to create p number of pools. That means like like a green pool and yellow pool. You have to create p number of pools. So. The other thing is you have m number of servers and you have the capacity and the uh, capacity and the size uh, of each server so that is given in this input file so for example you, they have given something like this this is r so there are two rows and there are five slots like this there are two rows and five slots two rows and five slots and one slot is unavailable okay so one slot is unavailable and you need to create two pools with using five servers. OK, so in the first, uh, the next uh, rows gives, gives the unavailable slots. So you have one slot unavailable, and uh, you have one row. 
like here you have one row defining what are the unavailable slots so the zero zero uh, slot is unavailable so you can see that the zero zero slot is unavailable next we have uh, uh, we have five uh, so five lines giving the uh, description about the servers so you have five servers uh, the first server has a capacity size of 3 with a capacity of 10 the next one has a this one has a capacity of 10 uh, size 3 and this one have a capacity 10 size 3 this one has a capacity 5 size 2 and this one has 5 and this has 1 so that is the explanation about the input data format so you need to like understand how the data is given and you have to uh, write a code to get this data extract this data using the input file and then you have the submission file format you have to like they have they are giving like a format to give you a solution so they are saying that you have you need to give m lines describing the allocation of each individual server so if you if you are planning to put this server let's say this is the first server and you need to put it in this place you have to give the row number which is zero and the slot number is zero one two you have so give it like zero two so then we know that the first server will be allocated in this place okay so you need m lines uh, saying define giving the location of each server and if you decided not to put that server in the data center you had to put an x letter okay so you know the you know how to give the output of the problem so basically what they do is they get this uh, file and they run it in the google server and they calculate the score uh, that is given that i mentioned earlier and uh, they will at the score, at the score for each uh, sample output, like they have like uh, several problems, like they give around five, I think five problems. So they get the score for each value and they add it up. And that is your final score. So that will decide your position in the leaderboard. So it is important to know how to get the input and get the out, uh, give the output to the server. Uh, the competition like the leaderboard so this is a sample uh, output given for the problem so the server 0 is placed in uh, row 0 and slot 1 and assigned to pool 0 oh, I didn't mention this you have to give the pool number as well so the uh, first server is uh, assigned to this position which is 0 1 and the pool is zero. That means the green, you don't need to, uh, there's no color actually, uh, just to identify the different pools. I'm, I mentioned them as green and uh, blue. So the pool zero is blue. So like that, the final survey is not assigned to any thing in the data center. Okay. So they are giving this score they will give this like a, how they calculate this score so what you need to do is first of all you need to write this you need to get this input and uh, from the file and you need to write a code to calculate this score so like i mentioned here you need to calculate this value so after that because you you can't submit this every time to the uh, submission server and find what find the score from the server because it takes a lot of time because you have to create the output file you have to upload it, it you, then the server has to run it and uh, it takes a lot of time so what you can do is you have you can write this because this is a very simple very, very simple task because you just need to write this uh, scoring function and uh, you can calculate the score uh, and also you need to you need the score to uh, sometimes some algorithms need the score to find the solution so it is important that you write the function to calculate the score 
for your uh, for your state in the problem. So for this uh, data center state, the score is number four. So like I mentioned, the first thing to do is um, you need to get the input input file, input from the file, and you have to get extract these values and write a function to calculate the score. So others should uh, think of a solution to the problem. Uh, the, 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 that is why you need to have a good communication with your team, because uh, if you take like one hour to uh, calculate, like write the input, get the input from the file and output and the scoring system, you have only three hours to find a solution. So it's important that you communicate with your members, like maybe you, now you can decide uh, this person will write the input code and this one will write the scoring code like that and uh, let's go to some of the solutions uh, basically these are not actually solutions these are like different approaches of solving optimization problems so as you can see like this is a very difficult task right so there is no straightforward approach to solve this problem like uh, there is no al algorithm uh, i mean like there is no like defined algorithm to solve this problem because you can switch these servers here and there because this is a very small problem uh, this can be like a thousand there can thousand rows and thousand slots and thousand servers so you can switch these around and uh, you might have a different answer and uh, you need to find the best solution that means a maximum guaranteed capacity. Uh, so what you can do is, the first approach is a greedy approach. So what you do is you just sort these uh, servers in the descending order of the capacity and you pick, uh, pick the highest capacity server and you put it uh, in a place uh, with the okay so there are like two rows and you have these kind of servers okay so you sort it uh, in the descending order of the capacity and you pick this server and put it in the first available uh, slot that means like if the size of this is three and the place you can put it is is here so like that you put these servers in the available place the first dialog place okay so that is a that is actually a solution so you can't say that is a wrong solution it might be that not be the best solution but it is a solution so what you need to do is you need to think like you need to discuss with your teammates and come up with the solution something like this so this is actually a solution if you write a code for this and uh, if you submit it submit your answers you will get a score and I'm pretty sure you will be you will get a higher like like not the best solution it will be like it will be like above average i, I think it will be I, it is fair to say like that so what you can do is you need to change this you need to come up with a solution and you need to tweak this solution like you can now you know that this will get this kind of a score and you need to come up with some kind of a tweaking of the solution to get a better score. So like I mentioned, this is a valid solution. And uh, let's see where it will go wrong. Uh, okay, so we will fill it like this. And the score for this is two and score for, like I mentioned, like so th for this arrangement, the score is two, okay? Because if this thing goes out, uh, the green one will have a capacity of four and the gray one will have a capacity of three. And if the top row goes out, the green one have a capacity of two and the uh, yellow, uh, gray one will have a capacity of 10. So the minimum of, minimum of those two is number two. So that means like, 
if this thing goes out the green will have a capacity of two and that is the minimum guaranteed capacity so actually you can have a score of three if you take another set of servers and put it here this is also a valid solution this is also a valid solution but this have a higher value but this is not the greedy method right so this is like a small tweak that we did to this uh, solution that we have like without putting two here we put two servers with uh, capacity two and the minimum uh, guaranteed capacity is coming from this uh, gray server okay so so this is actually not a bit this is not the best solution so how to improve this so one of the one other method you can use is stochastic method so what is stochastic method so what you do is you randomly select servers and randomly put them it might be it might be like a, you might think it is not a solution but it is a solution because if you can come up with the correct solution for any problem you can submit it you can see the and then you can get a score therefore you can come up with this come up with these these kind of like strange solutions you can like in here what we do is you remove a server randomly from the list of servers and you place it randomly in the pool in a different pool uh, in the server uh, data center different position and you assign it to a pool randomly so you repeat this for like until you get a satisfying score you can change the uh, randomness like you can use a 30 percent randomness uh, for step one and the 30 percent randomness for step two and a 40 percent randomness you can change these randomness values and get a you can see whether you will get a satisfying score and you can actually you can get you might get a higher score than the greedy method we don't know because we are randomly changing this but uh, you might not as well so how to improve this uh, stochastic method so there are like of course first thing you can do is change different probability numbers and you can get a different solution the thing is you can use like uh, there are different algorithms like simulated annealing and genetic algorithms you can use something like this you can uh, convert to your problem so that it will fit this uh, fit these kind of algorithms and you can run those algorithms and see whether you will get a better score than the previous uh, greedy method so this is another approach that you can use to solve these optimization problems so the other thing is uh, optimization method so what in this uh, method what you do is you define a function for your capacity so you can actually define a uh, function for this capacity and define the constraints related to this problem so you have you know that the you cannot exceed the row of a data center you cannot to place uh, these servers in the unavailable slots so those are the constraints in the problem so you define these constraints and you define a, a function and you maximize the capacity using a optimization algorithm so the uh, the thing in using when we are using a optimization algorithm you might go to a you might go to the best solution that is the thing so uh, it will happen in the stochastic case as well but it is a random there's a small random chance but in here you might actually go to the actual solution so i will discuss about mm, these diff, these three different approaches so that means the a greedy approach uh, a stochastic approach and an optimization approach so 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 one thing that you need to worry about when you're using a uh, optimization method is 
how to change these servers. You have like you have to change these servers so that it will maximize the capacity. So that you need to uh, define a way so that you change these servers here and there so that you go to the maximum capacity because uh, in optimization method, you, uh, if you take a very simple example, you might have a function like a convex function like this. So if you are here, uh, what you need to do is you need to go, you need to find the minimum, which is here. So you need to find a way to go down, right? So in this, uh, our problem as well, we need to find a way to uh, shuffle these servers and assign different pools for them so that you are going towards your objective. So in this case, we need our objective is to go to this minimum. Uh, in this problem, our problem, our objective is to go find the maximum uh, capacity. Okay, so like I mentioned, there are different optimization algorithms. So uh, like in a, in a very simple term, so you can say that uh, we need to find, if you need to find a global minimum uh, in a function, uh, the optimization problem, the optimization is finding the input parameters or arguments to a function that results in the minimum or a maximum output of the function. Okay, so you need to find the parameter. So in this case, the parameter is here. You need to find this value of, that means if you're finding the minimum, you need to find this value. So this is another example. Uh, these are the, the do shaded area is the uh, valid area. Let's say like that. So the blue shaded area is the valid area. So what you need to do is you need to find uh, the maximum solution. So it is here. I mean, when you look at it from this graph, you will see that it is the solution, but what you need to do is, uh, this is the, this line is the, uh, let's say that is the line uh, which has the uh, solution, let's say like that. So in here, the, the blue area is the valid, solid, valid area. So what you need to do is you need to find ax plus by so which which is the uh, this curve right here which maximizes the p where p is the maximum so what you need to do is you need to move this line here so that you will end up in this place so this is the best solution this line so i will explain this later in the, another, another slide so there are like tons of different uh, optimization algorithms and they are like uh, clustered into different categories but I will use this differentiable and non-differentiable uh, optimization uh, algorithms and I will choose these three uh, diff three gradient descent and uh, simulator annealing and generic algorithm and I will explain these three algorithms and uh, you might you, you might be able to use these algorithms when you're solving a problem and uh, in the Google hash code and you might be able to come with a good high score. So I'm not going to explain what are these uh, different type of algorithm, different types of uh, algorithms are, but I will go through these selected three algorithms. So gradient descent, like I mentioned. So what you need to do is you come up with, you come choose a starting point and you calculate the gradient. So in this case, we are trying to find this minimum value. You need to find the gradient of this function right here and you go towards that gradient by a small step. Okay, so after that, you calculate the gradient at that place and you go to the towards that gradient by a small step. Like that, when you go towards the gradient, you will end up in the end up in the bottom, like in here, in the minimum. 
So there is a gradient descent. So if you can define a function for your problem, and if it is differentiable, that means you can find the you can differentiate that function and you can use the gradient. You can find the minimum using the gradient descent algorithm. So if the you need like you need to read the problem and you, you need to see whether you can define a function using the variables like like the input variables of the problem and if you can write it in a paper and you can differentiate it you just you have to use the gradient descent algorithm or something related to that and you can find the optimum solution so the thing is if if the defined function is a convex function you will find the global optimum that means the best solution so if you can uh, uh, how do I say this? If you can uh, mold the problem and find a convex function for your problem, and you can use this gradient descent algorithm to find the optimum solution. So, the another approach is similar to anything, which is a, a stochastic method. So, what you do here is so you start with, let's say, here. Uh, and uh, what you do is you repeatedly find a random neighbor that means uh, you find a random neighbor uh, with a ra given randomness let's say uh, you i need to choose a random value so you come up with a random neighbor like this you choose something like this and see whether you are you have improved your score or not okay so what you do is you uh, reduce the scope of going uh, like say in here at the beginning you are going here and there very fastly and uh, that is the temperature of the we have defined it as a temperature so you are for at, at the earlier stages you go here and there very randomly and see whether uh, what are the maximum val values of the function okay so in this task in this task what you have to find is the maximum value which is here so what you do is you randomly choose uh, different neighbors of the function and then what you do is uh, you reduce the run uh, you reduce the chance of jumping here and there that means the temperature so as you can see when the temperature decreases you go to the best solution okay so when you're jumping here and there, what you do is you remember the highest value that you got. So, so it is better to actually go to the highest value. But if you if you are here, let's say if you are here, and if you use gradient descent, you might go to here, and you end up here, which is a local maximum, which is gradient ascent. But you will end up here, but you can't go to here. So the similar to anything. What you do is you randomly go here and there in that case you might end up in a place like this and you might actually go find a neighbor close to there and you might find the actual global maximum so this is used in different uh, like uh, different problems as well so uh, some of you might know the knapsack problem so in that case what you need to do is there's a person and he has to pass through all these points in such a way that you pass through a point only once and uh, you have to minimize the distance that he traveled so in here the, what they are doing is they are changing the path randomly using the single learning algorithm and find the path which is the best solution so like that uh, you can use similar Danny-Ling when you are solving a problem as well. Another approach is, which is a population optimization algorithm, which is genetic algorithm. So in this one, uh, what you do is, uh, so you have the input parameters, let's say x and y, uh, which is an integer, let's say both of them are integers. What you do is you, this x and y, uh, parameters will define a state let's say uh, 
let's say you have a problem and that state defining state is defined by these two numbers. So what you can do is you convert them into binary numbers and you can connect them. And you can you can call it a chromosome. You just define it as a chromosome. So you have different XY combinations, like means that means you have different states of your problem and you convert it into a binary uh, binary string like this. Okay, in this generic algorithm, but it is very crucial that you convert your problem to a binary string like this. So, if that problem, if you get a problem that can be converted into a, a binary string like this, that means you can convert the, the different parameters in the state to a binary value. Then you can uh, create a chromosome like a like a binary string like this, and then you you might be able to use a generic algorithm to solve your problem. So what do you do in the genetic algorithm? So basically you convert, you get random states to a problem. Like that means like you give random numbers to X and Y, you know, example, and you create these strings. So it, it is called a, so you can call it as a population. And uh, what you do is you select two, two uh, states from this population and what you do is you select a different point that you can like uh, is called a crossover point you just select a point position randomly and what you do is you transfer these values to here and transfer these values to other other place a2 so it is like a uh, it's like a gene so it's like a let's say these are the parents if this is a mother if these are the parents, they will like cross over their genes when they mix, when they have the children. So this is a generic algorithm, which is a population based algorithm. So these kind of algorithms use like these kind of evolution concepts, concepts on the evolution and use them to find the optimal solution. So this is something like that. So if the parent, these are the two parents, that is A1 and A2, we have selected here. So if these two have a very good high score and if you change these bits like this like using crossover and uh, you might get it there's a randomness right so you choose a point very randomly and you you just switch the bits and you might come up with the solution that is better than these parents so you have to calculate the Mm, score in this given state and see whether it is better than the parents and after that if you, you just put it to the population and you choose two uh, states from that population that might give a better uh, crossover that means like a, they might give a better children so what you need to do is uh, find the where find two states that might give a good result and then uh, of course you have you might you can't choose the best two solutions and that might go on, go go through a loop like this so if you choose the best two solutions you might get zero like this and you, you might come back here so you have to randomize that one as well and you have to but you you might you must choose something something that gives the high score like that and you choose those two uh, chromosomes and you find a crossover point and you change the bits and you get these children and you put it to a population and uh, once a, once a while you might actually change these bits randomly so that is called a mutation so you might change these bits you, you can change these bits randomly flip them uh, from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and uh, after that, you can put it into the population. So what happens here is you have the different states that defines the, the different parameters that defines the state. So what happened here is you randomly uh, change these parameters so that you go to a, a state that gives the highest score. So you have to 
uh, after doing all these things, you have to find the score and see whether you get a high score using those. I don't know. So maybe you can choose the parents, you can choose the children, or you can choose something randomly. So you have to find whether what gives the highest score. So what happens is these the whole population might converge to a solution that gives the highest score. So that's what happened in the evolution as well, right? So you might have like different kind of creatures and after evolving them through millions of millions of years, they come to a very optimal configuration that gives the best outcome for the creature. So this is also something like that. So I'm giving I'm giving a very brief introduction about these algorithms. You can search them in in internet and you can find more details about these algorithms. And the other one is the linear programming. So I will explain how to use the linear programming to our problem, the, the data center problem and how to solve the problem. So in this thing, you have what you have is the you have a feasible region like this. And uh, what you need to do is you need to find the optimum solution, like the maximum solution for this line. So you can define a line. So the line is defined uh, using this, so the CTX. So it is like a, a, in a 2D problem, it is AX plus BY, okay? So depending on the these two A and B values, you might get a line like this. So you need to maximize this. So you can maximize this. Okay, so when you are maximizing this, what you need, what, what is what changes is the constant C. So when you change the constant C, the line goes from, goes like this, like uh, it can shift from this, like like in a way like this. So, so you need to find the optimum solution, which is inside the uh, feasible region. So you might, uh, you might uh, think that uh, if you look at it, you might think that uh, what you need to do is actually go through these vertexes, right? You don't need to like search a solution here because whether it is a maximum or a minimum, it should lie in one of those vertices. So uh, when you're solving the problem, like when you're manually solving the problem, you might think, okay, uh, if I can uh, find these vertexes, vertices and uh, calculate the, uh, let's say the find the uh, find the find the a b a x a x plus b y line that goes through that point, I can find c value, right? So like that, if I can find the c value which is maximum, you can come up, you can go to this, you can find the line which is here, okay? So so actually it is a solution, but it is not very, uh, let's say, uh, it is not very uh, fast, let's say, like that. So there are like very different algorithms that have been developed to solve these kind of problems. For example, the simplex method is the first, like uh, one of the common methods that you can use to solve these kind of problems. So, the key thing to get here is, if you can uh, formulate your problem like this, find a vector x, x is a vector, that means like a one dimensional array, something like that, you can define it like this, that maximizes C transpose x. So C transpose x is, C transpose is a, uh, these are, those are like the uh, variables, a and B, okay? So X and Y, like this, okay? So which maximizes this line and uh, subject to uh, this constraint. So the constraints are the, these different lines here, okay? These are the constraints. So they can be like, uh, I don't know, let's say 5X plus 3y less than 3. You, so you have uh, different constraints like this. Okay. So if you can formulate your problem to a 
uh, you can formulate your problem like this. You can use linear programming to find the optimal solution. So, uh, so in here you uh, I did mention it. So in here you you find the uh, real number. So this is the real number the real number solution. So you might be able, you might want to find the integer solution as well. So in here you can see the integer solutions given, uh, given by dots. Okay. So if you need to find the integer solution, because in the data center of a problem, you need to find the integer solution, right? You can't have like a, a 3.5 pool like that, right? You, you either have to pull no, have the no, pool number three or pool number four like that. So you can't have a number in, in between. So you have to find the integer solutions. So there is a different uh, approach for integer solutions as well. So in this integer linear programming, what you find is the integer solutions only. So if you find the linear, linear uh, programming solution, you will end up here. But if you use the, in, the integer linear programming, you will find the optimal solution, which is here. Okay. So let's go to the problem. So what we are going to do first here is, um, so we have this data center. We have the rows and we have the slots here. So what we're going to do is we go through the first row. Okay. So the first row doesn't have any unavailable slots. So what you what you can say is here, first row, in the first row, you have a space of size 10. Right? You have a space of size 10. You can put servers in a row with size 10. So we have given it here. In the second row, we have two unavailable slots and you have uh, five slots in the first section and the second section we have three slots. So you can write that as, write it like this. So you have five slots in the first section and the three slots in the next section. Likewise, in the third row, you have three slots, four, four slots and one slot. Okay, in the next one, you have six slots. So you can redefine this uh, slot availability into something like this. Okay, so which is given by Z I J. So I denotes I denotes the row number, and J denotes the available block. Okay, so the uh, in here like this we can define the, I don't know maybe a dictionary or a hash map something like that, which gives the uh, available slot sizes, available block sizes. Sorry. So in the first row we have ten, we have five, three. 3, 4, 1, and 6. Okay, so we can denote the servers using variable k and we can denote the pools from variable l. So we have m number of servers, and if you want to address the k server, we use the k. And uh, if you want to address the uh, pool number l, we use the uh, variable l. Okay, so how to define the uh, integer linear program solution? Uh, integer linear programming problem for this uh, data center problem. So what you need to do is, okay. Mm. Okay, so what you need to do is, you define A. So in here, A means, so in here, A means like this is a, 2D, we give a 2D matrix to this, uh, what we call the block, okay? So here we have M number of size of M and here we have a size of P. So M is the number of servers and P is the number of pools. So if we have, if we put uh, this K server in the Lth pool, okay? So we put one here, are they, are they, other values are zero, okay? So zero, 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 zero. Uh, this value will be one. So we can, let's say the uh, kth server is size three, it will cover something like this. 
and we will assign it to pool number L. So likewise, we can uh, how do we say this? We can uh, uh, point a different point different matrices to these uh, to these blocks. Okay, so we point different matrices like this. So we can we can have different matrices like this in each of these blocks. So that is what we call A. Okay, so if we put another server, let's say server here, like the server which is in here, and we put it here the, to the pool number here, we put number one in this place. So if it is a size with, I don't know, five, it will be, it will be like this. Okay. So A will define this uh, different assignments of the server to different pools. Okay, it is either one. These uh, these values will be either one or zero. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the score. So we go through all the rows, okay? We go through all the rows and calculate the total capacity. So it is given by this fancy equation here. So we go through all the rows for, for a given pool and we calculate the total capacity, okay? And then we uh, reduce the like, if a, if, a, if a certain row goes offline, uh, we reduce the uh, capacity of that row. So it is given by this uh, GLI function. Okay. So this is not this is a very simple expression to find the uh, capacity of pool L when the row I goes offline. Okay. So what we need to find is. So this is the guaranteed, so the guaranteed capacity of the pool number L will be the minimum of all these uh, numbers for each row. So, uh, wait, I can, I need to clear this. Uh, okay, so the GL is the uh, guaranteed capacity of the Lth pool. Okay, that means that I, if we have a green pool, like that and uh, the GL gives the guaranteed capacity of the green pool and uh, what we need to do is find the minimum of all the pools okay that is the thing that we need to find and we need to maximize it okay so these are the constraints okay what are the constraints uh, you can't design uh, a server to two different pools you need to have only one pool for a given server and you can't exceed the size of the row so it is given by this equation zij is the size of the row and these are the uh, uh, size of the block sorry and uh, these are the, this is the um, total length of the server assigned it to this block okay so it cannot exceed the uh, total block size okay so we have defined a linear programming problem uh, to the data center problem that we have okay so what we need to do is we need to find uh, there are like uh, you you don't need to write the optimization code for this because there are plenty of optimization packages. So what you need to do is you need to learn one of these uh, optimization packages and you can simply uh, like you can define the, uh, you, you just need to add these uh, equations to the optimization package and it will find the solution straight away. So I will go to one of the examples. So, um, 
I will show you one of the optimization packages given here. I think I hope you can see the uh, website that I'm showing here. Mm, this is the Google uh, OR tools. Sorry, mm, Google OR tools uh, that has like many functionalities you can use to uh, find the optimal solution. Uh, so I will go through this. I will go through this uh, small example given in this uh, website, mm, the document documentation actually. So you can you can go to this Google OR tools, and you can download it for free, and you can use um, you can use it in many uh, platforms like Python, C plus plus, Java, or C sharp. So you can apply these, uh, you can install this uh, package to your favorite uh, programming language and uh, you can use it. So I will explain the Python package. So this is free, so you can download, for, download it for free and uh, uh, solve these problems using this package. So I'll give you a very small example about solving uh, very straightforward uh, set of equations. So, um, wait. Uh, okay. So, in here, uh, I will stop the camera because I have this in the other screen, so I have a look at the. Okay, so in here, uh, so first we have to find, we need to import the uh, this Python wrapper for this uh, tool, and uh, first need to we need to uh, define the backend that we are using that we are going to use. So in here we are using this. CSIP backend and we import it to the Python and uh, we need to so we need to define the the variables so in here in our problem the variables are the, those a values that I mentioned earlier so a i j k l so that is the variable that we have so we have around like I don't know the number of blocks into number of servers into number of pools. You have that many uh, number of variables that we need to add. So you can just write a loop and add these variables to the solver. So we need we have integer variables. You can define the value and uh, you can define a name as it. Okay, so you can add these variables to the solver and after that we need to define the constraints so if you have a constraint like this that means uh, 7x plus uh, sorry uh, x plus 7y is less than 17.5 so you just need to write something like this you just need to write solver dot add 7x 7 plus 7 7y less than or equal to 17.5 and if you have a constraint like this you need to write uh, solver dot add x is less than or equal to three point five. So after that, you need to define the objective. So in here, we need to maximize x plus ten y. So you write uh, solver dot maximize uh, x plus ten y, and that's it. You just need to write solver dot solve. That's the just the code you need to write to solve this optimization problem. So after that, you will get the result. So I will run. I will show the show an example here. So this is the problem that we mentioned earlier. 
So I wrote, I wrote, I wrote them and I added the two different constraints. I wrote the objective function and resolve. And uh, after that, you will get the. If you run it, you will get the solution like this. So solution is object uh, objective value is twenty three. So the maximum maximum value of the objective function is twenty three, and the variables are three and two. Okay. So what you need to do when you are solving the problem is you you will get the uh, different a values, right? You will get the different a values. Uh, that means uh, to which block the survey is assigned to and which pool it is assigned to so you get both of these values from the same uh, problem i mean like the same solution so after that you just need to convert it into the format that they need to like like the google the google hash code accepts so you need to convert it into that different format and you just print it and you submit it then you will get the Actually, this is the highest scoring solution for the Google hash code competition for the 2015. So it's very straightforward, right? You, you don't need to uh, know about programming that much because the hard part is done by Google because uh, this package has a lot of functionalities and you can use this package to uh, find the op optimal solution. You just need to give the uh, correct uh, constraints and the uh, objective function to find the optimal solution so okay so so you can use one of these uh, optimization packages and you can find you just need to so the important thing to note here is that you the in most crucial part is you need to formulate the problem according to the uh, linear programming uh, linear programming solution, uh, linear programming problem. So, if you can formulate the problem according to that, you can just use one of these packages and find the optimal solution. So, uh, I must note that every solution cannot be solved using this uh, linear programming because it is one of the optimization algorithms that is used here. So, like I mentioned, you can use those stochastic methods or different gradient, gradient methods or any optimization method if you can formulate the problem according to one of those problems. So in here, so actually in here, you there is like a minimax problem. So you, need, you must go, you must do a small tinkering to this problem and change this uh, optimization problem, uh, sorry, so the objective function and uh, remove this uh, min part here because you can't uh, use use it in the so this package if you have the minimum function inside the objective function so you just need to like do a small tinkering here and you will you can uh, get the optimal solution like that using the package so this is the final uh, formulated problem for this data center uh, problem in google hash code so so what you need to do is you can check this 2017, uh, 2017 qualification round as well because it is very similar similar to this uh, similar to this pro problem because it, it also can it, it can be solved using an integer programming sol uh, solution. So which is the uh, best solution in that case as well. So you can go go to these links and uh, learn more about them and. Uh, these are the different courses that you can take in Coursera. Uh, you can watch those videos in them and you can get a very thorough understanding about the optimization problems and uh, how to solve them using uh, these algorithms. So uh, what I must note here is that you don't need to, mm, I mean, you can learn the, you can learn the optimization algorithm in depth but you can, if you can formulate the problem according to one of the packages that can use this, uh, use these constraints and all those things and solve the problem. If you can uh, learn how to formulate the problem according to one of them, then you you can actually solve these problems within four hours, and you can get a very high score. So 
thank you very much for uh, listening to my talk and uh, these are the references and i can maybe i can share these slides with you if you want i'll give it to uh, danushka and uh, thank you very much and of course if you have any questions you can ask sorry okay now now i think you can ask any questions now if you have any questions i can answer them Uh, Harshil, there is a question uh, yeah. about how to get the graph. Hope you see. Okay. How to get the graph? Mm, what graph are you referring to? I'm sorry. I guess it was posted uh, when you were explaining about linear programming things. I'm not sure it's related. Oh, to okay. This, uh, this graph. Sorry. This thing. I hope she's asking about this. Can uh, you see it? I'm oh, sorry, I don't mind sharing. No. Yeah, you don't need to share it. Yeah. Mm, I think uh, it's given in the in one of the references. I think it's from. Uh, wait, uh, I'll go to that. Mm. Towards data science, mm. uh, well, I think machine learning mastery. I'm not sure. So it's it's in one of those references. You can go to these references. I check. You will find this. I don't think you you will find a graph, but like uh, it has a. It has explanation for these all these uh, algorithms uh, given here. I just created this graph so you can like find and see the how the different uh, algorithms you have. I mean the, uh, the number of algorithms are not limited to this. There are like many more algorithms, but uh, these are some of the common common ones that you can see here. Yeah, I guess uh, the question was answered, and so that is the only question we have got. But from that, I think uh, everyone was able to get, get some good knowledge on how to prepare and how to <clears throat> solve problems uh, in the competition. So uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Harshan on behalf of for Sri Lanka for joining with us and sharing your knowledge and your time as well. So. Thank you very much again. Uh, so looking forward to have uh, future sessions with you. See you again. Sure, welcome. Okay.